One of the trickiest people that you might encounter is the covert narcissist and falling for them and falling for the lies and the deceit can be incredibly painful because you don't see it coming. You've fallen for a covert narcissist or have you discovered that someone you're with or a friend or a family member might be a covert narcissist and you didn't see it coming and suddenly you're seeing the truth and it's like, oh my gosh, what is going on? What has been going on? How, how did this happen? How did I let this happen? Let's talk about why we fall for covert narcissists. My name is Lise Colucci and I am here to help you understand, transform your life after toxic people have been in it. One thing a covert narcissist is really, really good at is wearing a mask. They mask harder than anyone masks, okay? They put the face of being a victim, being empathetic, being kind, being considerate, being helpful, being friendly on. Those types of things, right? They they appear to be your basic nice person. They appear to be friendly and helpful. And that is the face that they show you. That mask, they will hold on for a long, long time. They'll hold it on in many scenarios, even when they're devaluing you. So that what you see mostly in their life is that person. What you see behind the scenes is an entirely different version of that person. Okay, we'll get to that in a second. And here's the dark truth, you guys. Behind that mask of friendly, helpful, even like a victim mask or someone that really needs help or, you know, poor them kind of thing is the darker side of this person. What we're talking about here is people who present themselves that way that I just described and then flip and the mask slips or little bits of the mask fall off and what you see is they will not take accountability they will not cooperate and co-relationship with anyone everything is self-directed everything is selfish everything is to get attention everything is about them receiving supply and attention and you see it because what starts to happen is you fall away in the relationship. You become less important. You become not important. You're having gaslighting thrown at you. You recognize that this person is projecting things onto you. They start blaming you for things that they're actually doing. They start telling you that you did horrible things to them when what you did was in reaction to something they did. They'll start stirring the pot. They'll start creating problems. They'll start, you know, acting out in ways that are just not healthy in relationships and then flip the script so the second you react to it, they pull back, play victim, and you become the aggressor in, and, and that is the narrative that they set so that anyone that you talk to about it or they talk to about it will take their side because by then they're playing innocent again with everybody else and friendly and kind and you're sitting there angry and infuriated, right? What does that look like? So here's the thing. Why do we fall for that? By the time it gets there, you guys, by the time it gets to the point where that kind of thing is happening, You've been in it a while, most likely. You have had it slowly degrade. Slowly, the mask will come off. It, it's The narrative isn't set like, bam, there's the narrative, and then it all falls into place. No, it's set really far back. They start playing victim from the beginning. They start playing innocent from the beginning and projecting that into the future so that it's like, see, everybody always yells at me. See, everybody always, you know, and behind behind that mask of vulnerability, let's say, behind that mask of friendliness and kindness is a controlling manipulator, a controlling manipulator with selfish intent, who is completely self-centered and selfish in every act they do, because the only time that they start being kind after that is when it serves them. But the thing is, before that, they set it up as love bombing with lots of kindness, lots of friendliness, lots of understanding, lots of listening. Ever notice how when you're with a covert narcissist long enough and they quit listening to you, and instead of listening to you, they devalue what you're saying so that they don't have to listen to you? But the point is, it's toxic. It's dismissive. And it creates an entire relationship that is toxic because the person won't take accountability and they won't be truly present to the relationship as required in a healthy relationship. And you're falling for it in the beginning because they seem healthy. They actually seem like the perfect match or the perfect friend or, you know, they seem like finally someone is there and understands and hears you and gets you, right? Because they know how to mirror. They know how to 
Take what you are and who you are in the beginning and mirror that back to you in such a way that it feels natural. They're not over the top. They're not boastful. They're not extreme. They're just nice. They're just friendly. They're giving. They're kind, right? Until there's conflict, until the point of their ego being challenged happens where they have to step back and listen to another person's point of view. Once that happens, and you, then they start to degrade the whole relationship through devaluation. They start diminishing who you are as a person. But before that, why you fell for it is it seemed normal. It not only seemed normal, it seemed pretty good. That well-honed mask that they wear, it doesn't slip into arrogance, okay? I mean, it will eventually if you wait long enough, right? If you're in it long enough with them. But at first, that, that mask, as it slips, turns into victimhood. It turns into, you know, their side of the story matters too. Their feelings matter too, right? It, they flip things around to being a very emotionally based thing instead of the more overt and more extreme tactics of, just shutting you down and like smugly walking away. And so because it seems like you're having conversation, you're having a relationship, you're having dialogue with the person, of course, as an empathic person, you fall for it because you're like, oh my gosh, they have feelings. I've hurt their feelings. Let me engage with this. Let me try and fix this. When what's actually happened is you're not fixing anything you're dealing with someone whose mask has slipped. The difference would be both people taking accountability when something is going wrong, when there is the devaluation in the relationship starting, or when there is something that feels less than pleasant happening. With a covert narcissist, that's when their mask will often slip because they don't want to deal in the moment with having to take accountability for anything in the relationship that means change on their end. Whether or not the person knows they're doing it, there is maybe an unknowing or a subconscious thing happening for them where it becomes systematic. It becomes the way they are in relationships, the way they relate to other people, especially in interpersonal relationships. They're not going to show their face to people they're not around all the time they're going to keep the mask on. And that's the problem with the covert narcissist. An overt narcissist is out there boastful and like trying to win in every situation, right? A covert nar narcissist is going to stay behind the mask. Someone with covert narcissistic traits is going to stay behind the mask, okay? They're going to keep that mask on unless it's threatened, unless it is something that they feel they need to protect, okay? they feel they need to protect that ego, then it starts showing. Is this familiar to you? You guys let me know in the comments what you have seen, why you think you were deceived by a person who you thought was nice, but actually turned out to be more of a covert narcissistic person. You know, when I'm coaching people as they are healing from this or when they're involved with someone like this in their life and we get to talking, one major thing comes up, okay? And that is the person who was on the receiving end of this toxic behavior, you, right, often feel compassion, you feel empathy, and people often feel the need to, to comfort and console the toxic person when they go into the tailspin of the devaluation that looks like victimhood. Okay, so when that toxic person starts behaving like a victim and gaslighting, Instead of getting angry enough to walk away or seeing through it really fast, right? People feel, I'm in this relationship with this person. This person's my friend. This person's my sibling, my parent, right? This person's someone I care about. And so I'm going to listen. So you start empathizing. And then you start comforting the victim that that person is portraying. And then you start consoling. And then the whole thing becomes about that. And it is so easy to slip into that role as an empathic person because that is a normal, natural role to take when someone else is hurt, especially when they're hurt by your words. Does that make sense? And so this covert narcissist can play this back and forth with the mask on and the mask off and the love bombing and the devaluing in this way for a long time. In fact, they can hold on to it for a lifetime. And so we just start falling into the patterns of that relationship. We don't see it as 
toxic until we step away for a second or until we really examine it. And we realize that it's actually that we're never heard, that we are not actually participating in this relationship. We are just being used to help that narcissistic person or what appears to be a narcissistic person slip the mask back on so that they can pretend they are as good as they present themselves to be. So if you guys need coaching, group coaching, or peer support, please check out the information in the description of every video. If you join the peer support on Facebook, please make sure to mention this channel so that we can get you in quicker as we are adding people to the group. And guys, take care. I will see you next time.